All right, today we're going to talk to Sean Wang, a.k.a. Swix. We'll talk about his uh, developer journey, uh, what he's up to today, and uh, about the upcoming JS Nation Live conference that he'll be speaking at. This video is sponsored by Git Nation. Be sure not to miss the biggest JavaScript conference in the cloud happening June 9th through 11th. JS Nation Live will be three days of JavaScript talks and discussions with more than 35 speakers and over 25,000 JavaScript developers attending worldwide. You can expect to hear from authors and core teams from these amazing JavaScript libraries and projects. Discover the future of JavaScript and connect with other developers from around the world. Get your tickets now using the link in the description to get 20% off. Swix is the author of the uh, Coding Career Handbook, the missing manual for junior to senior devs. He also teaches React, TypeScript, and many other things at Egghead IO. And he runs the Svelte Society community of meetups. It sounds like you're uh, actually not that busy, right? I mean, I didn't even talk about your day job yet. <laughs> so um, <laughs> why don't you go ahead and give everybody a quick introduction? Yeah. Hey, everyone. Uh, I'm Swix. I am originally from Singapore. Uh, moved over to the U.S. for college, um, spent my first career in finance, burned out of it, and then switched to tech at the age of 30. So if any career changes in the audience, um, I definitely feel you. And um, we can talk about career, career transition stories um, later. Um, I was originally very big in the, the React and JavaScript ecosystem. Um, recently, I've been moving more into Svelte. Uh, and then uh, on a personal level, I was the developer relations uh, developer advocate for Netlify and then uh, AWS, and I most recently am head of developer experience at Temporal.io. Nice, nice. So let's talk more about that. Like, uh, what made you switch uh, from financing to development? It's it's a complicated story. The the okay. immediate reason is that it was a very high stress job. So there were three of us uh, in our hedge funds and we were managing something on the order of a billion dollars of gross notional exposure, which is not the actual amount of money, but like it was a, it was a fair amount of responsibility for three guys. And, uh, there, there, there are many nights where I just like slept under a table and had nightmares and, um, <laughs> about, about, about the, the my positions. Um, but mm -hmm. the other, I think the long running, uh, issue was that, uh, finance is a very zero sum short term game. And I realized that tech, uh, cause I was, I was coding on the side tech was, the more long-term positive sum game. And I wanted to dedicate the rest of my life to that. So I, I made the switch. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. There's, there's lots of people going through the same uh, uh, situations. I get uh, asked that all the time. Is it too late for me to switch from whatever construction <laughs> to uh, computer development? And uh, right now, right now is, is the right time. Every, Oh yeah. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I mean, doesn't matter. Yep. Global demand for software has just exploded since, uh, since the COVID crisis. And uh, yeah, I mean, you may you may feel like you missed the boat, but trust me, like people mm -hmm. felt that ten years ago. Um, and yes. as long as you figure out a way to get your foothold in the industry, uh, you are needed here. Um, and I'm happy to talk to you about like ways to get in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So let's talk about um, the uh, the JS Nation conference. Uh, what is uh, what is the topic that you'll be speaking on? Yeah, I'll be talking about the third age of JavaScript, which is. Uh, basically, I try to blog uh, on a weekly basis, and <laughs> it takes about that much work for one blog post to really go viral a year. And last year's really viral blog post was this idea that uh, we're entering a third age of JavaScript. And uh, it was a historical perspective because JavaScript is about 20, 25 years old. Um, the first age was about forming the language. The second age was about building the ecosystem. And the third age, which we're in now, uh, is about consolidating uh, the ecosystem and the death of IE 11, which people were very excited about. Yes. Yes. No more IE 11 support, please. <laughs> yes. Um, so, so you're saying that JavaScript hasn't always been JavaScript, like it's gone through changes. Like that's, <laughs> that's crazy, right? <laughs> so, I mean, it's hard to imagine now, but like, you know, it went through a near death experience, uh, you know, in the, in the first age, uh, there was a period of time where it basically looked like flash had won. Um, or, you know, and, and there were, there were multiple attempts at like forking JavaScript into like action script. Um, uh, there was a, an attempt by Microsoft Silverlight. I don't know if anyone mm -hmm. watching remembers Silverlight, uh, but there are all these attempts at sort of proprietary standards and the open, the dream of the open web was seriously at risk. Um, and it was really up to a random meeting in Oslo actually that rescued the standardization effort of, um, of. JavaScript. So I call 2009, even though we're going through like a major financial crisis, I call 2009 the 
um, Annus Mirabilis of like the, the the year of miracles of JavaScript because that was the same year simultaneously Node.js, npm, uh, and ES5 were born, uh, and that is the foundation for the the next ten years. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I, I remember uh, I remember uh, ActionScript. Uh, that was way back in the day writing some ActionScript. But um, so where where do you see uh, JavaScript going in the next ten years? Like what do you, what yeah, do you see yeah. for the future of it? Yeah, exactly. That's the that's the exciting bit, right? Everyone and and obviously, mm -hmm. who I I don't I don't actually know. I have some mm -hmm. guesses, and uh, it's very exciting for people to to pin. You know, we're we're about one or two years into the new decade, and uh, we're we're trying to pin like what what exactly is evolving. Um, so the first thing that we know for sure is that IE eleven is going away. Um, a lot of very prominent companies from like uh, Daily Motion to LinkedIn to Twitter have already deprecated IE 11 support. So it's now just down to like the B two B enterprises uh, that that are still supporting for their legacy users. The mm. the key catalyst that I'm looking for this year is for the U S government to drop IE 11 support, and I think they can drop it this year because their rule, uh, according to U S Digital Service, is that when when two percent of visits uh, when it drops below 2% of visits of IE 11, they can actually drop it. So uh, we're at 2.1% now, and it drops wow. about 0 0.1 per month. So uh, round about June, July-ish, um, the U.S. government can drop IE 11. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, so alongside of that, so what does that actually mean, you know, in terms of shipping JavaScript? So we, we can take out a lot of the transpilation steps. Like we can, we don't actually need Babel uh, if, we're, if we're just sticking to, uh, you know, well-accepted syntax. Um, and uh, we can ship a lot less JavaScript because a lot of times right now, a lot of the ways that we compile tooling is we compile for the lowest common denominator. Um, and that is typically inclusive of IE 11. So we ship a lot of polyfills. So ultimately it's for a better developer and user experience on the whole, just because we start from a better foundation. Um, and that's also paralleled in Node.js where we uh, now have the ability to use ES modules unflagged compared to common JS. Mm -hmm. So essentially, it's the you know the 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 story of the third age of JavaScript is the total victory of ES modules and the mm -hmm. shift in tooling to to make that um, the the central assumption, which we are starting to see now with uh, tools like Vite, which are which are very popular, which are built on top of ES Build. Um, mm -hmm. That's one that's one dimension in the thesis. The other side of the third age of JavaScript thesis is the idea that we're collapsing layers. So the, um, we used to have this idea of the Unix philosophy. Every um, one tool does one job, and then you chain together a bunch of tools. The problem with that is that you're chaining together a bunch of things which are all half maintained, and the configuration explosion uh, gets gets really crazy. So I think what, right now what we're define, redefining what the job is. Uh, now we want one tool to do uh, the standardized job of like linting, uh, testing, and uh, compiling, and bundling, and all, and so, and so on and so forth. So uh, a bunch of tools are emerging with this mentality in mind, for example, Rome tools, which I uh, just got VC funding this week, uh, as well mm -hmm. as Deno, uh, which is the new, the new runtime from, uh, Ryan Dahl, the, the creator of Node.js. So a lot mm -hmm. of, uh, innovate innovations, but all fitting in the same theme. And I think if people have a organizing mentality around like what the next 10 years are going to look like, you can slot in mm -hmm. these developments into essentially what I call the first draft of history, right? Like we're, we're observing history evolve in real time. And we can make our bets and uh, investments and career decisions based on this perspective. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned Vite. Like, I'm, I'm so excited about all of these new tools. Uh, and really, the, the the differentiator I think with Vite is that it doesn't support IE 11, right? We're not out of the box, right? Um, and so it's able to to do so much so much more, and it's so much it's so much faster than other compilers as well. So, all right. So be sure to join the JS Nation conference on June the 9th, where Swix will be uh, going over the third age of JavaScript, get that complete talk. And you'll also have a panel discussion on the next gen build tools. Um, before we wrap up, is there anything else that you would like to add a shout out, anything at all? Um, I just like to shout out self care. I think people should, I've been, I've been working out more during COVID and it's really helped me in other parts of my life that it's not just physical. Um, it turns out that our bodies are closely tied to our, to our mental state. So I guess I'll shout out working out. Like if you, if you feel down, just awesome. go for a run or yeah. Um, t take care of yourself and your bodies. Yes. Yes. Uh, same here. Like I've, I've been, uh, kind of slacking during COVID and I am trying to get back in shape because I kind of want to be in shape before I have to meet people in person again. Yeah. <laughs> <Same here. laughs>
<laughs> All right. All right. Well, uh, we will see you at JS Nation then. Thanks for joining me again. Thanks, Jesse. Be sure not to miss the biggest JavaScript conference in the cloud happening June 9th through 11th. JS Nation Live will be three days of JavaScript talks and discussions with more than 35 speakers and over 25,000 JavaScript developers attending worldwide. You can expect to hear from authors and core teams from these amazing JavaScript libraries and projects. Discover the future of JavaScript and connect with other developers from around the world. Get your tickets now using the link in the description to get 20% off.